Josh here checking in for another episode of the Research Review Series. Uh, this week I'm actually going to be doing another article related to delayed onset muscle soreness. I'm going to get right to it. So uh, this week's article is called Compression Garments and Recovery from Exercise-Induced Muscle Damage, a Meta-Analysis. So first off, this is a little bit different than the last study I reviewed in that it is a meta-analysis. So if you're not familiar with that term, it basically just means that they looked at the results from a large number of studies and they tried to compile all of those results from various different studies and see if they could come up with something more meaningful. So basically what they did is they looked at studies that were using compression garments to reduce the effects of exercise-induced muscle damage. Now what are compression garments? Those are essentially any type of clothing that applies compression. Now this isn't like your standard Under Armour compression. Uh, it's definitely something a bit tighter than that. Uh, so I actually have, uh, these are some uh, like kind of calf sleeves so that you use them for usually running right here. I got these on Groupon for like $20 so they're a lot cheaper than they normally would be. But that's an example of uh, what they are and they're extremely tight, very difficult to get on and off. Um, so essentially what they did is they looked at a bunch of studies. They started off with something like 5,000 studies and then they narrowed it down. They eventually chose 12 to use uh, to compile data from and they looked at uh, the following variables. They looked at delayed onset muscle soreness, which I discussed in the previous video, also known as DOMS. They looked at muscular strength, muscular power, and the creatinine kinase, which is the blood marker of uh, muscle breakdown. Now I'm just gonna take a step back really quickly in case you're not familiar with the terms that have, uh, the difference between muscular strength and muscular power. Strength is essentially how much force you can develop. Uh, it has nothing to do with how fast you do it though. So somebody who's really strong, say, could deadlift 900 pounds, but it doesn't matter how long it takes them to do that. They could strain and take them 10 seconds to do that. Whereas muscular uh, power, on the other hand, as opposed to strength, muscular power has to do with using that strength quickly. So being able to jump very high or um, throw a shot put, something like that would be an example of applying muscular power. So essentially what they say is that normally uh, exercise-induced muscle damage causes you to have an increase in DOMS, normally you have lower strength, uh, lower power, and you have an increase in creatinine kinase. Obviously since it's a meta-analysis that means that they were all different kinds of studies. Now the intervention in all of the studies was a little bit different to induce um, muscle damage. Right? And remember, muscle damage is just it's a normal process of working out. So they range from doing things like box jumps to doing bicep curls to playing sports games like basketball or rugby, which would normally induce um, a bit of soreness. Now, in the actual study itself, what they found was that when they compiled all the data, there was actually a reduction in these effects of exercise-induced muscle damage. So how significant is, was that effect is really the ultimate question, right? Because otherwise, if it was just a small effect, who really cares? So they actually used an interesting statistical technique. i um, not going to really go into it. It's called the Hedges G. And uh, essentially what this does is it allows you to compile all the data and use put it into meaningful terms. Specifically, if everybody in the population were to start incorporating the use of compression garments, what effect would you actually see? So I'll, I'm going to read, read that off briefly. So for strength and power, um, the results are that 69% and 66% respectively of the population would experience accelerated recovery using the compression garments. So that's to say that normally you would expect after you induce muscle damage from a significant workout, you would have reductions in strength and power but they're saying that if you're roughly two-thirds of the population would see a positive benefit of accelerating the recovery, meaning that you'd be able to get back in the gym a little bit quicker or go back on the trail, whatever kind of working out you're doing. So for the delayed onset muscle soreness, again, the number was around 66%. So with the use of the compression garments, roughly two-thirds of the population would experience a reduction in the DOMS. So that's interesting. And then finally, with the creatinine kinase, they were similar levels where you'd have uh, lower markers in your blood of the muscle breakdown from using these garments. This seems like pretty good information, right? So maybe we should all go out and buy some compression garments that we could use to reduce recovery. Now what I'm going to say first is that 
in this study, it did not compare the difference between using the compression garments during and after exercise as opposed to just after exercise. So some of the studies that they included had people using the compression garments, using them during, both during and after, and some were only using them for recovery only after. So the study did not uh, differentiate if there was an effect during and after versus so just after. Another thing that's important to note about all these studies is there was always a, obviously an experimental group that wore the, had them and then there was a control group that did not have the compression sleeves or, or other similar compression garment. The problem with a kind of study like this is that it's pretty much impossible to have a true placebo for your control group. So as a result of that, there's no way to eliminate the placebo effect in any of these studies. So the authors can see that that's certainly a possibility with um, enhancing some of these results. So it's hard to say how much of these results are actually really uh, a physiologic benefit and how much of it is actually placebo. And finally, in all of the different studies, all of the garments were kind of from different manufacturers to different specifications. They weren't all the same tightness that was not specifically measured. So there's certainly a lot of variability as far as that goes and we're not quite sure what is the right tightness of a compression garment to yield these results. So there's definitely got to be some more research in the area of how tight should this be, um, should you be, what's the timing of this, and things of, of that nature, but I would say that it's safe to say that there is probably some benefit to these compression garments with regards to recovery, the extent of which is kind of going to be a personal basis. You'll see people who really love these things, you see people who don't use them and are perfectly fine. I personally only picked up a pair because they were $20, so I figured, what the heck, um, and I started running again, so I figured I'd give them a shot. Personally, it's hard to say if I'm actually receiving any benefit, but this is an interesting paper to show that kind of when they were able to pool this data that there is actually some reduction in the exercise-induced muscle damage. I uh, hope you guys liked the video and found it informative. Please give the video a like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, make a comment below. And also, if you'd like to see any uh, new videos, uh, research review videos specifically, let me know if there's any topics you'd like me to address. Alright guys, peace.